This is the Philae temple complex built 2000 years ago. This whole monument was not on the Ajilkia island where it is now located, but it was moved here stone by stone from the Philae island on which it originally stood. The Philae island was submerged in water after the construction of the Aswan Low Dam in 1902 and the temples on it were underwater to about one-third of their height. The Philae temple is dedicated mainly to the goddesses Isis and Hathor. Hathor, the cow goddess, is depicted here on the wall with horns of a cow with the sun disk in between them. This temple complex also has shrines for other gods like Osiris and Horus. The temple was mainly expanded in the Ptolemaic period to its present size from a previous smaller temple, which stood in the same place. This dark discoloration of the stones show the level to which the temple walls were submerged underwater for some 60 years. It is amazing how these reliefs on the walls of the temple have survived for millennia including the flooding of the past century. You have to come here to truly experience the grandeur of this structure and the monumental effort of the ancient Egyptians in building this temple. I consider myself fortunate to touch these beautiful reliefs carved more than two millennia ago. Look how intricately these huge pillars are carved. During the Christian era, many of the ancient temples were converted to a church and the reliefs and statues of ancient gods deliberately defaced. The sheer scale of this ancient temple astounds me. This place is thriving with tourists from all around the world. This is the first pylon of the temple. Pylon is a huge gate of an Egyptian temple. It consists of two pyramidal towers between which is the entrance of the temple. Ordinary citizens were not allowed inside any temple in ancient times. This privilege was reserved for the king and the priests. But the pylon was the outermost edifice and was open to public viewing and so pharaohs used the walls of the pylons to depict themselves in a godly manner. In this larger-than-life relief, for example, the pharaoh Ptolemy VI is shown slaying his enemies. The Aswan sun is unforgiving, but despite this, there are incredible number of tourists present here. Most walls of the temple are covered by graffiti by visitors of the past 2000 years. Many graffitis are in Latin left by visitors many centuries ago.
We are now in the central court of the temple, which is surrounded by large columns. This is the second pylon. It shows the Pharaoh Ptolemy VI Philometer offering to Goddess Hathor and the Falcon God Horus. This is the stela erected by the Pharaoh Ptolemy VI to grant tax revenues to the temple. The face of the cow goddess Hathor is carved on the top of these columns. She was the goddess of love, beauty, music, dancing, fertility and pleasure. In many reliefs, she is shown breastfeeding the pharaoh, thus blessing him with her holy milk. These wall reliefs show the King Ptolemy offering to gods such as Osiris and Isis among others. If you remember, I had said that during the Christian era, these ancient temples were transformed into churches. This is a cross engraved in those times. We saw a similar cross on a pillar when we toured the Roman amphitheatre of Alexandria in Block 8. We are now entering the temple through the second pylon. These are names of the Victorian adventurers who left their marks on this monument exactly 200 years ago in 1823. We are now inside the vestibule of the temple, the last space before the sanctuary. The vestibule is surrounded by huge stone columns which are covered in hieroglyphs and beautiful reliefs. In this relief, the king and his two wives are shown offering to the gods. And in this, the king is offering to the falcon god Horus, who is wearing the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. On the wall above, the same king Ptolemy VI is shown offering to goddess Sekhemet. The whole wall therefore is covered with reliefs of the king offering different gods of ancient Egypt.
We are now inside the sanctuary of the temple, lit only by these two small windows at the top. The walls are covered in detailed hieroglyphs and reliefs showing the pharaoh offering different gods of ancient Egypt. In ancient times, this room held a small sailing ship or a bark that had an image of the goddess Isis on it. This is the holiest place of the temple. The crowd has increased in size. We need to get clear of this congestion. Can you see the chisel marks on the reliefs? This is the work of the Christian priests that converted this temple to a church during the Byzantine era. This whole wall is covered by the hieroglyphic cartouches of the name Ptolemy. We now exit the temple. We can only imagine the sheer effort it must have taken for the sculptors in those times to carve so many figures on stone. This whole island has many smaller temples dedicated to other gods of ancient Egypt built by different kings over different time periods. It has monuments built by Roman kings such as Hadrian, Augustus 
and Marcus Aurelius when Egypt was a province of the Roman Empire. Yeah. That. A broken statue of the cow goddess Hathor. You can see how her ears are made to resemble cow's ears. Yeah. Okay, Take me. There is graffiti on yeah. almost every wall of the temple. Take me. This impressive structure is Trajan's kiosk. Assumed to be built by the Roman Emperor Trajan during his reign, this structure served as the main entrance to the temple from the banks of the Nile. Although now roofless, it once had a timber roof which has long since decayed and disappeared. We are now back to the pier of the Philae temple complex. Let us get a boat back to the anchorage. Hi, it lets it. Oh.
Let us take one last look at the temple of Philae.
म्हणल्यासारखं